Peter Parker just went through hell in his own book, fighting against every single one of his villains and trying to prove that no matter what, Spider-Man will prevail. But something like that doesn't just go away afterwards. Something like that stays with a man. Welcome to the Comic Story and Channel, where I break down what's happening in current comic books, giving you a synopsis that I narratively read back to you. This allows you to have an understanding as to what is happening so you can buy the next issues or buy these current issues to get more context. We make alterations to the dialogue in the panels to avoid copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now allow me to bring you the story of Spider-Man Beyond and where Peter Parker went in today's episode of the Complete Story series, where we're going to be covering Amazing Spider-Man 75 and 76. It was another morning as Peter Parker wakes from yet another nightmare. A nightmare where he couldn't save those close to him. He wants to pretend that it isn't real, but that doesn't change the fact that Harry Osborn is actually gone finally. Something that always helped take Peter's mind off of things was putting on the Spider-Man mask and doing what he could, even if it gets harder and harder to do it. But no matter how noisy those streets are, how loud the people are, there's never any traffic when he swings. It helps clear his mind. However, there's only one problem with that. There's another Spider-Man swinging through the city. Peter hurries up trying to catch the new guy asking, What gives? Spider-Verse? Aren't you guys supposed to check in when we come to check on each other's dimensions? The other Spider-Man doesn't answer him and instead turns back, telling him, Shh! Peter yells, Oh, no, 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 no! No one shushes Spider-Man! He tries to web up the imposter, but his web line just bounces off. Next, he pulls up the ground that they were standing on, and the imposter crashes through it like nothing, tossing back a spinneret drone to immobilize Peter. The drone latches on, coiling around Peter, telling him, Please relax. You will be released in one hour. You should take this time to reflect on your life. And with that little run-in, the next morning, Peter Parker heads to ESU, trying to put together what exactly happened the day before. Who was this new Spider-Man? But as he heads into class, he hears someone calling out to him, and he turns back to see Ben Riley, One of Peter Parker's clones from back in the day. One of the ones that has survived, has gone on to become the Scarlet Spider, to become the Jackal, and do various other things. Ben looks at him. Hey, it's been a while. Y you got a second to talk. So the two leave and they go grab some coffee with Peter folding his arms. So, and Ben stops him. Yeah, it was me. I hadn't been out in a while. Plus, I was on a staff run, so I couldn't very well let you talk or they'd listen in. Peter stops. Who's they? Have you ever heard of the Beyond Corporation? Peter shakes his head no, and Ben tells him that they are a multinational conglomerate who has been on a spending spree for the last couple of years. They're buying up pieces of businesses. Roxxon, Brands, Parker Industries. Nothing too important or dangerous, just old trademarks. Like the one for the name and likeness of Spider-Man. Peter realizes what is going on. While he would never trademark the name Spider-Man, there was a period when Otto Octavius was in his body, and he created an entire industry with the Parker name on it. And in Parker Industries, he trademarked Spider-Man to be the bodyguard of Peter Parker. So of course Otto would trademark it all. He would gain copyrights. Ben goes on telling him, Beyond wants to get into the superhero business, but they want to do it right, and they want to put Spider-Man on their payroll. So here I am to fill you in and let you know what's going on. Peter stops him. No, that's not going to happen. Ben tells him, actually, Peter, I wasn't asking. Peter stares. Oh. Beyond is going to pay me stupid amounts of money. And so they chose me this time. So I'll see you around, Peter. Later the night, Peter gets a notification that ESU is under attack by the UFOs. Their vector tells everyone to keep looking, but X-Ray tells him that they got some bad information. It's not here. Peter arrives, giving off his normal quips, stating that there's a distinct odor. And it's not good. Like one of them is made of noxious gas. Ironclad tells him it wasn't funny the first time that they heard it. Peter asks, wait, first time? That's when he looks over to see Ben in the Spider-Man Beyond outfit lifting up the debris that he was trapped under, tossing it aside casually. Yeah, these guys don't think we're funny. Peter stops. How did you get here so fast? I have a team now. They monitor the city and they tell me where to go. Vector shouts that that's enough. It's time for them to leave. And both Spider-Men state that they all know that isn't going to happen right? Vector tells Ironclad to take them out and be cruel. And as Ironclad charges in and punches, Ben blocks it, pushing him back. Peter asks, how did he? But Ben tells him, I've got kinetic sensitive phone in my costume. Locks under impact. Pretty neat, huh? 
But we need to hurry and take these guys out. Hit them hard, hit them fast, and together. The two begin to turn the tables as two Spider-Men battle against the UFOs, with Vector yelling that it's time to finish this. He begins to create gas surrounding the two of them, and Peter begins to cough, asking what is this? X-Ray laughs. <laughs> You're gonna love this! And as a cosmic beam shoots into the cloud, Ben tells him that his suit is telling him that the gas is radio volatile. That means an explosion goes off around both Spider-Men. And as X-Ray yells that he did it, Ben then punches him through the head asking, Did you know I have lead-lined gloves? No, my suit has all kinds of neat tricks. Peter then gets up coughing, taking off his mask. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And he begins to vomit. Ben grabs him, telling him that the Beyond suit is designed to handle these things. Your suit's just normal, Peter. Peter says that his spider sense warned him, but inside, the danger is inside. As Ben holds him up, keeping it together, Peter's vision begins to fade to black. A short while later, Aunt May's phone rings, and as she picks it up, Peter tells her, Hey, I'm in the emergency room right now, and McCarthy, I'm hurt, so come quick, okay? Before she could even ask, Peter hangs up, and Aunt May says, That wasn't Peter. At the hospital, Ben is hanging up, having called her on behalf of Peter. And the doctor yells, asking what happened to his brother here. The scans are showing toxosis, or some kind of radiation poisoning. Maybe both. But even before Ben can answer, Mary Jane runs in, shouting, Where is he? I am looking for Peter Parker! The doctor walks her over, telling her that Peter is in no shape to see anyone. And MJ says, Don't tell me that! He just called me! The doctor tells her that it's impossible. Maybe she talked to his brother? MJ is confused, looking around the hospital. What, brother? But the nurses begin to yell that he is convulsing. And as the doctors hurry off, Ben is nowhere to be found. In the ER, Peter's spider sense is blaring. It's telling him that he is in danger, but the danger, it's coming from inside of his body. His body is the danger. There's something inside trying to kill him. He stabilized again with Aunt May coming in asking, what happened? They said something about radiation. MJ tells her to keep her voice down. Peter is resting and, but he coughs. <coughs> ladies, 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 one at a time. I'm not some piece of meat. Aunt May asks what happened. And Peter says, oh, just some villains, the UFOs. They tried to attack Empire State and I was, I was. MJ covers for him, stating that Peter was meeting with Professor Connors after getting his grades up in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he was exposed to, well, the doctor isn't sure. Aunt May scoffs, not sure isn't good enough. Where is this doctor? I would like a word. As she leaves, there's a knock on the door, and MJ looks back. You! What did you do to him? Ben walks in. Things got out of hand. I'm, I'm sorry. Is Peter going to be okay? MJ quietly yells that maybe he should have stuck around to find out instead of just dumping him on a curb. Uh, ben, if you're going to talk your way out of this one... You're gonna need to get those lips moving. If she starts swinging, I'm in no shape to stop her. Ben sighs. Look, if I could take his place, I would. It's just this Spider-Man thing. I still want to do it. It's even more important now that, well, you know. But I've decided, Peter, I can't be Spider-Man without your blessing. Peter asks, half alive. You want my permission? What happened to not asking? I didn't handle that right, Pete. I'm not used to getting the things I want, or I need. I wasn't expecting people to help me, so I don't know how to ask. That's what my therapist says, at least. But this is me asking. Peter glares. It's hard when you're around. It really is. It feels like I'm being asked if I can share my life with you. I don't know if there's enough to go around, so it makes it even easier to ignore that this is even harder for you. But you deserve to be who you are. You deserve to do what makes you happy. You deserve to be Spider-Man. Ben smiles. Thank you. Get better, okay, Pete? Peter tells him, I'll be out there in no time, man. Don't get too comfortable on your own. And one last thing, be amazing. Ben nods and walks out as MJ says that she'd be mad at him right now if he wasn't the sweetest man alive. Peter doesn't answer right away. And MJ asks if everything's okay. Peter tells her, I'm waiting for Ben to get out of earshot. She asks why. And Peter tells her that he can't feel his body. MJ screams for someone to come and help him. And Peter's spider sense fires off as his whole body seizes up. The doctors and the nurses tell him to hang on. But in Peter's mind, he says he can't. His body is the danger. It's shutting down. He can't let it. 
He's got to escape. He's got to get away. And while Peter is fighting for his life, Ben follows up on the UFOs. After dispersing vapor and using the lead chafe to stun X-Ray, Vector shouts, What are you doing, Spider-Man? And as the smoke fades, Ben stands up with his new tech web shooters. Hell yes, Spider-Man! And there you have it. The beginning of the Beyond Saga. The first two issues were explaining where Peter Parker is and... It looks like he's going to be out of commission for quite some time. And I hope you guys kind of enjoyed what we did here today bringing you this. The next storyline has Spider-Man Beyond fighting against Mobius, and we're going to be covering that very soon, as this is coming out on an every other week series, so we should be getting to these in a relatively fast manner. If you want to stay on top of the Spider-Man Beyond storyline, please consider pressing that subscribe button, hitting like, and joining the comic story and army by turning on your notifications. Please consider checking out some of our new projects. They're linked down below. And don't forget, you can find us over at Patreon, where you can vote on the stories coming to the channel, such as Wolverine, or more Batman animated series, or Batman Beyond, or Detective Comics, or Moon Knight. All that is up there right now, and will be coming to the channel eventually. Thank you for your guys' continued support, and I'll see you next time, right here.